So apparently Hyundai allows you to charge your car for free at any Hyundai dealership. Hi, how long does it take you to charge your car in the charger? Um, about four hours for like a complete charge. A, a complete charge up to what, 250 miles? Um, I think around 250 to 300, I think it is. Oh, okay. But it's um, around like, depending on the charge you use, it runs like four to six hours. Oh, okay, cool. No, actually, I, I was about to drive one of the Konas. Oh, yeah. Yep. I know a lot of people don't like hearing it, but this is the future, and there's not much you can do about it. Uh, the car doesn't have a soul. It, it doesn't have a soul. I can't modify it so I can have a dick measuring contest with all the guys in my car club. Yeah, I know how you feel, but the bottom line is this is the future. See that? That electric shit right there? You see that? just like a goddamn cell phone. Nice and quiet, so I don't have to hear your stupid shitty four cylinders, stupid six cylinders coming through my neighborhood at three o'clock in the morning. Eventually those things are gonna be illegal and outlawed, and I'll never have to hear your ridiculous shit box economy car ever again. And that's what I cannot wait to happen. And this is actually pretty nice. This is actually a lot nicer than the Hyundai Veloster. It's nice. It's a nice color. And this is actually nice. You know, see, hatchbacks are really nice. And the thing about it is this thing has a range of about 250 miles. So ultimately, you're talking about if you're doing a complete charge in three or four hours, you know, that's actually not bad because you figure most people are going to get home at what, about five, six o'clock at night from work. You just plug the bastard in. By the time you wake up in the morning, what, you're going to wake up at 5 a.m., 6 a.m.? The shit's fully charged. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. That's a really nice car. And it has a decent-sized back seat, too. That's pretty nice. So let's go drive this, this, this Kona. A lot of people don't understand the reason why I love electric cars so much lately. Well, it's because electric cars are just awesome. They're the future. They are the future. So here's the thing. This is the Kona. This is the Kona EV, I should say. This is the Kona EV. And I'm just going to put my windows up. Open up my sunroof, as always. So I get the sunroof. Now, this is the back seat. The back seat is, you know, it's okay for if you're a mom with some kids or something like that. And, you, and your husband... Or your husband with your wife and she drives and this, that, and other. So what we got here, we got lane, uh, uh, blind spot, uh, heads up display. So that, oh, look at that. There's a heads up display. Look at that. Oh, shit. Oh, snap, look at that. That's cool. Okay, let me push that again. Let me push that again. Look at the heads up display. Oh, snap. I didn't even know anything. I didn't know this had that. That's cool. So if you look in there. You can see the information, miles per hour, lane information, okay? Yo, that is freaking cool. Now, let me tell you something. Let me, let me start off by saying this right here. One of the things that I like a lot about Tesla is that, you know, they, they want to make their cars nice and they want to make their cars futuristic and everything. I've got no problem with that. I actually really like that. But here's one of the things I hate about Tesla. With the Model 3 and the Model Y, there should have been some kind of next generation heads up display in those cars. There should have been something in those cars that was just next generation, but there wasn't. They gave you one screen right here, nothing right there. This is exactly, this heads up display is exactly what Tesla should have had. And I'll go so far as to say, that's also what other companies like Bugatti should have. They should have something like very futuristic. So first of all, this is your drive, park, put it in park, drive, neutral, and reverse. This is reverse, reverse turns on the reverse camera. Let's go back to drive. Heated and cooled seats. Notice that, heated and cooled seats. We're gonna hit the heat seats. Nope, we're gonna turn that off. We're gonna put it on cooled seats. Look at that. Okay, we got a heated steering wheel. So basically, every single feature that you'd normally have in a Hyundai Genesis is in here. 
Now, how do I fit in it? Eh, it's, uh, this, this car is definitely a little smaller than my tastes. It's definitely not as big as that Beast SRT right there. That big, fast SRT. You see that Ionic? I, I like, almost want to drive that Ionic because that Ionic it looks really nice as a hatchback. That looks really, really cool. But um, this thing, because of the fact it's an electric car, they have some features in here in order to help you save energy. For instance, the air conditioner has a driver only mode. So you can drive with the air conditioner only on you. So I can hit that and look at, listen to that. The, the air conditioner turns down, focuses only on the driver. Now I can turn driver only mode off and I can cool the rest of the entire car. Okay, that's nice. The rest of the car, all the fits and finishes, it's, it's exactly what you'd expect of a rental class Hyundai. But the beautiful thing about that is it keeps the price of this car down. We'll look at the price later. Okay, because what we're really focused on is how fast is this thing? How does it charge? How fast is it charge? Yeah! Yeah, this thing's got... See, the, that's the thing I like about these electric cars. Instead of you having to play games with some stupid four-cylinder with, like, shitty pickup or some stupid six-cylinder with shitty pickup, these things have very strong pickup because they have electric torque. And let me say this also. For those ladies out there who want a Model 3 or a Model Y, you don't need a Model 3 or a Model Y. You can go and get any of these new electric vehicles and you will most likely have a better car than the Model 3 or the Model Y. Now the Model Y and the Model 3 have very sexy looks. I'll give them that. But the thing that you gotta understand is, in fact, let's take a, let's take a close look at this car, why not? See, the thing about it is the Model 3 and the Model Y, they're very sexy looking cars. Unfortunately, they don't give you anything special. And that's always been my problem with those cars. So here you got a heads up display. You have a full speedometer, full odometer. Okay, we got the buttons because now Elon Musk is trying to get rid of the goddamn buttons because he's trying to be cheap. So let's take a look. You got your heated cooled seats for your driver and your passenger, heated steering wheel. Tesla wants to make you pay extra for every single thing. And most of the features that are in here, you can't even get in a Tesla. You cannot get cooled seats in a Tesla Model 3. You cannot get cooled seats in a Model Y. You have to go to a Model S or you got to go to a Model X. That's not fun. That's not fun at all. This is a cute little car. It doesn't, you know, it's funny. It doesn't really stand out as an electric car unless you know what you're looking for. The charging ports are hidden. It's a cute little car. It's a cute little car. It's, I mean, it's, it's definitely economy grade. It doesn't have a whole lot of cargo space, but it's a, it's, a, it's a cute little car. I'll tell you what, buying one of these, you get a hell of a lot more than you get out of a Tesla Model 3. I'll tell you that right off the bat. The Model Y is bigger than this, yes. But when you get one of these, you get a hell of a lot more than you get out of a Model 3, for certain. Man, that, you get that easy. little stuff for your uh, power kits and everything charging kits and everything we'll talk about charging and all that later this is your little uh, hideaway so you can hide your stuff back here so nobody break in your car electric cars of the future what are we looking at so this is $47,120. Now mind you, even though it's a $47,000 car, what you won't be paying for is gas. You'll be charging it at your house. Tesla is also planning to open up their superchargers to let everybody use them. So when that happens, um, everybody will be able to use all of the superchargers networks they have, which will definitely piss off some Tesla people because the thing about it is most Tesla people, they think that they're paying for the exclusivity of using the Tesla supercharger. In reality, once they open that supercharger up to everybody to use it, the stalls may get a little bit more crowded, but I think personally, I think most people are gonna try to charge this thing at their house. So that's what the car looks like. I, I, I have to say, it's not bad at all. It's, it's, it's a rental, car grade interior 
but it's functional and it's got all the functions that you expect one of these cars to have you know so we're going to take it on a nice little cruise nice little cruise and it says notice it says the range is 31 miles the range just dropped to 30 miles now obviously you can save power by putting it in driver only mode i have the air conditioner up as high as it'll go and um in fact let's push climate let's see what that does okay so this is the climate system i can turn it down to 62 and it's all out let me say it like this it's very hot outside Right now, my Apple Watch is saying it's 88 degrees. It's very hot outside. Inside this cabin, I'm feeling nice and cold. I got my cooled seat running. My booty feels nice and cool. I like it. I really do. So if you're looking for a new car and you're thinking about going electric, just remember, if you get yourself an electric car, you don't have to worry about paying for gas. Your wife still gets something decent. Your girlfriend still gets something decent, whatever. And uh, everybody's happy. So let's throw it back and drive. Let's go driving. Now, th I have to say, this thing, because of the fact that you're dealing with electric motors, the low-end torque that you get out of these cars is fabulous. It just, it just goes. It just goes. And, it, and the funny thing is, it doesn't have the issues that you have with a gasoline car. Like, a gasoline car has to build up torque. It takes maybe about a little half a second or something. Transmit that energy from the engine to the transmission. Then the transmission has to get that energy from the transmission to the front wheels and the back wheels if you have a front wheel drive and an all wheel drive. So they have a transfer case. It transfers the energy to the transfer case. Transfer case transfers the energy to the front and the back. Here's the thing though. Electric car, as soon as you step on that pedal, energy is automatically you're, you're going that's it you're going and until you drive one of these things you don't fully understand what i'm saying when you drive an electric car it changes your mind about how you feel entirely about cars so as you notice you see the heads up display right there i'm liking that you know i i, I like this now what i've noticed is the air conditioner running at full blast is knocking off about a mile's worth of range. But then again, this thing wasn't fully charged in the beginning. So when, when I bring it back, if she's not still there with her Ionic, which I don't think she is, I'm gonna take this and plug it right back in. And I'm gonna plug it right back into the side so it can charge. Just to show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Now see, I can out-torque most of these other cars from the low end. Now, see, this is the thing a lot of people understand about torque and horsepower. Torque is what gets you off the line. What the hell is this guy doing? This damn Civic, what's he doing? So anyway, torque gets you off the line. Because these electric vehicles have instantaneous torque, that means that as soon as you hit that button, this accelerator, boom, you're going. Horsepower is what allows you to move faster. So torque allows you to accelerate against drag, which is everything holding you back. But horsepower is what allows you to hit these top speeds. Now, most of these electric cars that are budget electric cars, they don't have a lot of horsepower, but the amount of instantaneous torque they have is enough to stop them from feeling slow and allows you to get to highway speeds quick. And that's what I really, really like. You know, not only that, the fact that you can plug the thing in just like you plug in your phone. And as you can see, we've got some information right here. It's showing us that there's a speed limit of 55. And it is showing us that right now I'm doing 20 something miles per hour, 29 miles per hour. Let's get up there. Let's get up there. Yeah, it's not terribly fast. It's just that the torque, uh oh, we got lane departure. So when the lane departure turns on, you see the uh, light light up yellow. How about that? So you get a warning, audio warning that says, hey, guess what? You're out of the lane. Get back in the lane. Okay. All right. So far, so good, right? So far, so good. Handling seems to be okay for this kind of car. I mean, this is not a race car. This is not 
This is not like a freaking McLaren or something. It's not a Lamborghini. So the the steering is electric steering. It's relatively light. But uh, yeah, I mean, if it, bottom line is this: most people, you're not physicist. You you don't know a whole lot about uh, advanced engineering and all that. But what you're interested in is saving gas money. You're interested in being able to have a vehicle that you charge at night, you drive to work, you drive home, you charge it, and you don't have to go to a gas station. That's what these cars are about. That's what these cars are about right here. You don't have to have a physics degree. You don't have to learn anything. All you have to do is have a plug and a charger built into the side of your house. And if you don't have one built into the side of your house, you can run an extension cord into your garage or into your house, and you can use step one charging. That's what this, that's what this car right here is about. I, I'm, I'm liking, I, I love seeing, I, I really love seeing when I get into a car, the, any car, electric car, gas car, I like seeing these features. I like being able to use these features immediately. You know, and that's the thing. Like, you, like, I can't say anything bad about these cars. Like, even the Volkswagen ID4. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Electric cars are awesome. Absolutely love them. Look at this. Let me, let me get around this. Let me get it. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not Hellcat fast. It's not Jeep SRT fast, but it is fast. It's got, it's got some pickup to it. But because of the fact that this thing's got that instantaneous torque, it's got that... It's got that powerful EV pickup that is characteristic of an EV. I like that. You can see it's got a nice nav map screen. I like that. Look at this guy with this with this uh, Civic. Next thing you know, he, he's going to tune his car so he can make fart noises out of his muffler because he thinks it's cool. It's not. It's just not. But see... You're not buying a car to race people. That's not what you're buying the car for. You're buying the car so that you can use it as basically an appliance to get you back and forth from work. You're not buying the car to race people. That's not what this is for. Everything's very nice and quiet. I like that. Okay, I have the turn lights. Very nice and quiet. Fifty. Sixty. Wow. Yeah, man. These things are... <laughs> man, these things are something. Okay, I'm on the line right there. Man, these things are something. I gotta say, man. I gotta say. You you know, you know, like, you know, I haven't... It's hard for me to criticize. Like, and this is, this is technically an economy car. It's really hard for me to criticize this thing. This thing is so awesome. I'm gonna make my wicked U-turn. Okay, we're gonna go right back here. We're gonna do that zero. We're gonna do that zero to sixty. What, what's this? Zero to sixty. Watch this. Zero to sixty. All right, I got the heads up display. Okay, watch zero to sixty. Okay, under be, because of all that powerful torque, it takes a little bit of slip. That is sixty. Oh, okay, that's fifty-six right there. All right. Okay, so the one thing I do see is I don't think this car is all-wheel drive. I think this car is probably front-wheel drive. So, when you're doing a zero to 60 pull, it takes a little bit of slipping before this thing really locks in those tires. So, my thing is, if you have better quality tires, you could use those. But ultimately, when you have this much torque in these cars, it's like going to grind your tires to dust. It's actually better to get an all-wheel drive electric car. Now, that's one thing Tesla has going. They make their cars all-wheel drive for the most part. And um, that really helps. That really, really helps. Okay, let's see. Let's let's do the zero to sixty right here. Let's do the zero to sixty. Okay, zero to the light. Zero to the light. Zero to the light. Zero to the light. All right, let's go right here. Right here. You hear that slip? Okay, that was fifty. That was zero to fifty because this guy decided to get in my way. No big deal. There's more space. I can do it again. But see, that's the thing. This car slips and slides, and there's a lot of, you know what they say, they say spinning ain't winning. And spinning ain't winning is basically to tell these people that no matter how much horsepower, no matter how much torque you got, if your car is spinning, 
you ain't winning the race because something else is going to beat you to the finish line because you were busy spinning while they're busy moving. So that's the thing. There's a lot of wheel spin, but that's to be expected because there's so much torque coming out of these motors. Now, if you had all-wheel drive here, there would be no, or there would be very minimal wheel spin and the thing would just take off just like a bullet. And that's the reason why a lot of people believe that the, the Tesla cars are so fast, you know? It's because they got that all-wheel drive. When you have all-wheel drive, that changes the game. Let me get around this Jeep. Okay, 60, 70, 80. All right. Man, it's hard for me to criticize this thing. It's just like I drove the uh, Kia Nero. And I was very impressed. I like that Kia Nero. It's very hard for me to criticize one of these things. These things are awesome. It's very, very, very difficult to criticize. Now, I want you to notice we're down to 21 miles. So I'm running this AC full blast. Now, here's the thing. The average person, you're not going to drive like I'm driving right now. So that means that your battery is not going to deplete as quickly. In fact, right now I'm getting freezing cold. So chances are, if you were in this car, you're not going to run the AC as high as I'm running the AC. I'm running at a full blast. All right, let's do this. Let's do, whoa, throw everything to the side. Uh-oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's do the zero to 60. Let's do the zero to 60. Let's do it. Go. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 70. All right, I let off. You see, I, 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 I like this. I can't complain. Let me tell you something. Oh, I don't want an electric car. They've got no soul. It's so boring. Why don't you just make another supercharged car, Dodge? Let me tell you something. When Dodge makes that EV, I want it. I want that car. I absolutely want it. I absolutely want it. Because it's going to perform in ways that people who've never experienced an EV can't even imagine. Uh-oh. There's a copper. Look at that copper. Holy shit, look at that copper. I slowed down for him. Look at that guy. And the cop's about to run the light. What are you about to do? You about to run the light? You gonna stop? Okay, yeah, yeah, he's stopping. He's stopping. I thought he was gonna run the light. My fault, my fault. My bad, officer. Okay, let's start up again. So officer is getting right off the line. Obviously, I am not going to uh, I'm not going to uh, take off behind him because I do not want his ass pulling me over and trying to put his knee in my neck like I'm George Floyd or something. So I'm just going to let him go. And I, I got somebody next to me with this bend right here. I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to stay right next to the officer right here. I'm just going to let him go because I am not George Floyd and I don't want no knees in my neck today. So... But let me just, okay, here you go. Green light. Go on, go on, officer. Keep going. Keep going. Well, so we, oh, shit, we got a race car out there somewhere. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is it. This is this is what it is. No, it's not a BMW. No, it's not a Benz. But the thing about it is these cars are an appliance. These cars are so you can drive back and forth to work pay very minimal cost for fuel and once you pay one of these cars off you can basically drive around free for the most part i mean you're going to pay electricity because you, you got to you know get the electricity and by the way some people are like oh yeah well the electric cars are terrible they break the listen the main thing you got to focus on is your battery you get the warranty for the car. Make sure that the car has a warranty that covers the battery. Make sure the car has a warranty that covers uh, repairs and everything, and you're fine. Because me personally, I don't buy any car without a warranty. That's why when I buy my cars, I buy my cars brand new. I buy my cars with a very long-term warranty, which I usually extend. Like right now, my car has uh, uh, extended warranty. And that's how you do it. You don't have to worry about the battery. And the thing about Hyundai is Hyundai is pretty got they've pretty good much got decent customer service where you don't have to worry if something goes wrong with your car, they're gonna give you a loaner. So if you have a Kona, if they don't give you an electric Kona as a loaner, they'll give you a gas Kona as a loaner. But the bottom line is you never have to worry about not having a car because for the most part the dealerships have uh, concierge services, which they started with the Equus and the Genesis line. And uh, for the most part, they are looking out for you. I'd also like you to notice, when the car is slowing down and braking, 
there's an energy flow meter that shows you where the energy is going. So the energy flow meter right there shows you when I have my foot on the accelerator, it shows the energy going from the battery to the wheels. But as soon as I take my foot off, energy is going from the regenerator braking from the wheels to the battery. So right now with my foot off, wheels to the battery, but with my foot on, battery to the wheels, right? It's, it's just that simple. You don't have to be a genius. Now, one thing you gotta understand about electric cars, electric cars require you to be constantly accelerating if you're on the highway. However, electric cars, when you're decelerating because you're in traffic like this, that's when they get back some of that energy. So gas cars are better on the highway than they are in city traffic, but electric cars are better in city traffic than they are on the highway. It's, it's, it's kind of the exact opposite going on right there. So an electric car actually prefers that you have your foot on the brake or that you're slowing down in order to recapture some of that energy. So that's what it is, man. That's just what it is. I'm gonna get over here to this lane. And if she's not using the charger, we're gonna plug this bad boy in. So I, me personally, you know, I've uh, leased Hyundai before. I leased a Genesis, leased an Azera. And um, I've been very happy with their, their service for the most part. Very happy. Oh shit, she's still there. God damn it. She's still there. All right, well, that's no big deal. We can always, we can always recharge later. So yeah, um, let me, uh, I'll park it near the charger. They can, we can charge it later. They got a couple of other corners. They got some gas corners. They got some electric corners. But uh, yeah, I mean, th these things are awesome. It's like if you really want one, this is exactly what you should aim to consider getting. They are fabulous, 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 fabulous. So let's just throw it in reverse. Okay, that's reverse. I'm just gonna back up right there. All right. Okay. Thank you for riding with Big Truck Series Electric Car Reviews. This is your captain speaking. It is currently 62 degrees in the cabin, and uh, we just hope you enjoy it being with us. So when you step out, please remember in that hot 88 degree temperatures to have a nice day. Mark and off. Everything that's Korean made has to sing for some reason. They, they made my dryer sing. They made my washing machine sing. Let, in fact, let's turn it on. I bet there's a song. There's always a song. It never fails. There's always a song. All right, what you got? What you got? Mm-hmm. There's always a song. Let's turn it off again. 